Uh, anyhow, it's really nice to be in Krakow again. Uh, it was the 90s um, when I was a young boy after school. I went by bicycle to Krakow, <laughs> and uh, it was really, really uh, a nice uh, thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I love Poland somehow. Uh, I always come back to Poland because of these times, uh, extraordinary times. Thank you very much. So let's start um, on the RNA revolution. It's going forward. Okay, it's going forward. Yeah, uh, you know the Nobel Prize was given this year to Katalin Kariko and Drew Weissman, uh, one entrepreneurs working on the RNA subject. And actually their technology saved the world because uh, it was the, the principle of the corona vaccines, uh, their technology, uh, the RNA modifications they did. Well, RNA, let's come um, to RNA itself. Um, it's a really, really nice, interesting uh, molecule. Uh, a lot of people forgot about it, um, especially in the 90s, nobody was working on RNA. But it's the oldest molecule in the world. The first molecule, first biomolecule was RNA indeed. That's really interesting. Why nature was developing this kind of molecule? Um, and you know, if you work with RNA, it seems RNA is very unstable. When I was in my lab uh, doing the PhD, it was a hassle to work with RNA. And scientists, they believe yeah, RNA is very unstable. You have to avoid it to work with RNA. Why is it like that? Because I'm coming from a chemistry department. So therefore, chemically, RNA is very stable. It's the most stable molecule, actually. Uh, more stable than proteins or than even DNA. You can boil RNA. You can heat it up 100 degrees. Um, and nothing happens to RNA. So therefore, chemically, it's really stable. And that's the reason why nature developed molecules destroying RNA, called RNases, destroying enzymes of uh, RNA. And RNases are all around, you know. If you speak, um, there are RNases, um, and RNases destroy the RNA. And that's the artifact seeing the lab. If you work with RNA, a lot of RNases are around, therefore RNA is going to be really uh, easily destroyed. And therefore, you know, this is the kind of the, the thing you have to think about. It's the oldest molecule in the world, the most stable molecule we have in biochemistry. So this was the beginning of the evolution in the world. RNA was there, DNA, you can see the double strand, DNA. We know the DNA, it's on our chromosomes, chromosome material. And people used to work with DNA for a lot of times. You know, uh, gene therapy, for example, in the 90s, um, and there uh, were a lot of problems uh, using the gene therapy approach because DNA is very stable. It has to be inherited from generation to generation. Therefore, it's a stable molecule. Um, and uh, there are no that many DNAs, so destroying enzymes of DNA, then RNAs, is destroying enzymes of RNA. So therefore, people working with DNA a long time, um, but uh, DNA, uh, it's very hard to control. Once DNA is in your body, it's expressed. So proteins are made for kind of weeks. You don't know how long exactly proteins are made from that. Using RNA, it's more easy because RNA is destroyed in a couple of hours or days as you want. You have a mechanism to stabilize RNA. Therefore, you get one shot RNA, you know, for two days, there's an expression, then the RNA is gone. That's not the case with DNA. You never know what happens to the DNA injected into your body. So again, RNA is heat stable, it's well soluble, soluble and uh, you can easily produce large quantities of RNA. That's also possible. So actually, I'm from Tübingen, that's the south part of Germany. Um, and actually, um, RNA was discovered, and DNA as well, in Tübingen by Friedrich Miescher at that time, uh, in, in the 80s and in the 1800s. Um, he didn't really know what he detected. Uh, so it was long before uh, the code, uh, the genetic code, and uh, the things like that. Uh, he was just thinking, is something, is not a protein, but it's in every animal, I find it, so it must be very important. That was his message at that time. And uh, it's interesting that in Tübingen, <laughs> the RNA revolution was started uh, by our company. So we got entrepreneurs, and interestingly, IT entrepreneurs like Dietmar Hopp, the SAP founder, or Bill Gates, uh, Microsoft, because somehow it seems RNA is a kind of IT molecule. It's an information molecule. It's called messenger RNA. Messenger gives you information to the cells. And that's interesting. Long before AI things, um, it was already clear to me that's quite easy to speak with the body, to talk to the body what to do if there's a health issue in the body. 
So that's Tübingen. You can see it's a very nice medieval town. Uh, and on the left side uh, is the new technology park, like here, um, 20 years ago. And uh, also there were a lot of publications on this technology. And this were actually our first labs at the university where we can use, could use old chemistry faculty labs, where we started a business uh, due to a grant to our um, Baden-Württemberg. So the state of Baden-Württemberg gave us some, some money to start the business. Otherwise, it would have been very um, tough. Actually, we were quite young guys from the studies, you know, and going to the VC companies, they say, well, who are you? Why do you think you want to, you want to revolutionize the world? How you dare to do that? So therefore, it was quite, quite um, impossible to get money funding. So this kind of uh, situation at the university, um, our first employee um, in our lab, and our conference room in front of the elevator, so it was always blink, 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 when we were talking, people were coming out and in. Yeah, and then we moved in 2003 to the technology park in Tübingen. Uh, we were the first ones in the technology park because it was a very dark time. Uh, a lot of uh, companies went insolvent. Um, so <laughs> we were the only left. And our, our company car uh, as well, we're very proud. I guess we are Germans, we are proud on cars. So therefore our first company cars. So therefore, QVEC developed quite nicely, and it's also noted in NASDAQ um, uh, in New York. Um, yeah, and then we got our first money from a small venture company in 2003. Our employees then 2090s, 90s, now they're double or triple of fourth time, five time size like this. Many more people are engaged here. Um, and uh, of course, we are very proud that we have a lot of collaborations uh, with a lot of companies, also with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So that's quite interesting. And it's a really neat that we also get uh, know-how from other parts of the science, scientific community. Well, I already told you, um, I think the most important thing for us was that we in, uh, implemented the pharmaceutical um, production, so the GMP production, good manufacturing practice uh, production, that's not easy because you have to maintain all the things like the pharma industry, like the big pharma industry. And we were quite a small company, not knowing exactly what to do. And I think this was a really, 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 really strong impact also for the others following us. Therefore, um, we invest a lot of money to get this approval and to start clinical trials because without clinical trials, just having mice data, it tells nothing. So people really want to see clinical trial data on humans. So this was the most important impact uh, in our development, that we could start clinical trials with humans. So we did a lot of trials um, already um, in, in flu, um, in polio, uh, and of course COVID as well. Um, and let's come again to AI things. It's about information. So it's an information-driven pharmacy, um, um, uh, pharmaceutical. It's from nature because we don't modify RNA. Uh, now we have seen that it's needed to modify the RNA, like BioNTech and Moderna. pseudo uracil is a new building block, uh, artificial building block in RNA. But anyhow, um, it's kind of a software approach we do that. And once again, from school, you maybe know uh, DNA, chromosome material, then there's uh, the messenger, the RNA, and from this messenger, proteins are made. And that's some, a lot of important patterns. Uh, there's also kind of uh, struggles with uh, the others, uh, BioNTech and Moderna, about patterns we uh, sub uh, submitted already in the beginning of the 2000s. A very important, um, and you can just see the infringement uh, 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 battle with uh, BioNTech. It's on this patent. It's a patent uh, called GC enrichment. GC means uh, guanosine and pseudosine. Uh, they are two building blocks of the RNA. You can see these are the adenine, tumin, guanine, and pseudosine building blocks. Uh, adenine and tumin are binding with two hydrogen bounds and guanine and pseudosine with three hydrogen bounds. So that means the more hydrogen bounds, the more stable the RNA is. And that's the patent. Uh, we found out that we should use uh, GC, guanosine and pseudosine. Um, the more we have of these bases, the more stable the RNA is. And that's the patent uh, where's the conflict about. And you can see that's the kind of AI language of the genetic code. Um, triplet is coding for one amino acid. Amino acids uh, getting a protein. 
Um, and you can just use this scheme to do any protein you want. Uh, you can code anything what you really want on RNA. So it's an algorithm you can use. What we implemented were some called of untranslated regions, so regions that are just uh, for stabilization of the RNA on 5' prime on the one end and on 3' prime on the other hand, that the RNA is kind of complexed and stabilized uh, with proteins uh, which are uh, available in the cell. So this is a kind of natural stabilization process. We don't use any modified uh, bases like uh, Moderna and uh, BioNTech. And this is the technology of Kati Kariko, the Nobel Prize winner. She was just replacing uracil, that's a building block of RNA, with pseudo-uracil. It's a small difference you can see here. Uh, there's one uh, more N um, included in that, or the N is switched uh, from one place to the other place. Um, and uh, this actually is an interesting technology because it uses the immune response. So we were aware about it already uh, 15 years back when she was applying uh, also in QVAC. Uh, should we should use her patent and we should use her technology. And she was using that because the immune response was somehow declining. So when you inject RNA in the body, RNA is a danger signal. So if there's RNA in the body appearing, the body gets in a danger. So you get uh, huge dangerous signals, uh, huge immune response. And the reason why it's like that, because body is fearing there's a virus attacking it. There are a lot of RNA viruses around, therefore RNA gives you a danger signal in the body. So if there's somebody, some, some RNA uh, attending the body outside of any cells, body gets in a danger. And what Carico did, uh, the pseudouracil is somehow demissing the danger signal. So the danger signal is reduced. And that was the reason why CureVac failed um, in the COVID vaccines, because CureVac had to increase the dosages to get an immune response. And the higher the dosage, the more the immune response was there and an artificial immune response against everything. So QVAC was forced, forced to reduce the doses to get an, a proper immune response. And the dosage was too low to deliver the information to the body. As I said, it's a kind of information. The body needs information. It was a too low doses. It could really increase, couldn't really increase the dosage. Whereas Moderna and BioNTech, they could use triple times, four times more dosages than CureVac. And this was enough to induce the immune response and was enough uh, signal and there was really no um, side effects on that. So that was the reason why CureVac failed in uh, utilizing the COVID vaccinations. And that's the reason why BioNTech Moderna did so well in that. And that's the reason why Cardi Carico got the Nobel Prize this year. You can see it here, what I told you. So Moderna already used 100 um, uh, microgram, uh, BioNTech 30, and we just 12 microgram. It's really the highest dosages. Otherwise, uh, it's too high, and uh, it's not really getting a lot of side effects higher than that. So that's the reason. Well, again, we are really proud that we got the first GMP uh, um, um, approval like that. And of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, preclinical and clinical work um, we started with oncology, um, that was uh, uh, more important to us in the beginning, and then we switched to uh, COVID-19 vaccines. You can see there were a lot of trials going on, but uh, we didn't succeed. We couldn't get the approval there. So again, what's also important to know that uh, the production is always the same. It's just the sequence you change. So the production process remains always the same, whether you do a vaccine, whether do you do a cancer vaccine, COVID vaccine, or you do some different thing or an enzyme like that, it's always the same process and that's the beauty in it. Because RNA is like software. Go ahead. Why is it not going ahead? Yeah, okay. Another nice thing, because I told you already, uh, it's a quite of easy process and always the same process. You can uh, have a kind of printer of RNA. That's really interesting. It's a kind of device. You can just type in the sequence you want to uh, be printed out and the printer is printing out. You have to put all the ingredients, enzymes like that, into the printer and then you get your RNA constructs in the end. And one day you make an influenza vaccine, the other day you make a COVID vaccine, the third day you make a prostate cancer vaccine. 
that's the thing. And you can really um, have it kind of mobile station. So if there's an outbreak somewhere in Uganda, in Africa, a new COVID outbreak or a new other disease, you can just implement a machine there and you get, uh, get it printed out where the spot uh, happens of this uh, outbreak. So that's the print box. Um, and uh, we invented that uh, and we are very happy that we could collaborate with uh, Elon Musk from Tesla because Tesla is uh, building some uh, very important uh, building blocks of this machine. Um, so therefore, we met also Elon Musk coming to Tübingen. He's really also interested uh, into this. And when we started the Tesla collaboration, we met him uh, in Palo Alto and he was asking me why I should uh, work with you. Uh, we do cars. We want to work with BMW and this kind of, well, why I should work with CureVac. We say, well, Elon, it's like flying to the moon with us. We do the same, like you, uh, in your vision, because we revolutionize medicine. And therefore, we need a printer. And you have the technology to provide us with a printer. So, in the CureVac printer, there's Tesla technology in included there. And uh, I think that's the reason. And we are just the only project outside of car uh, automotive industry. Um, he's not dealing with anybody else uh, than with, uh, with CureVac, because he was really interested in uh, fulfilling this um, vision. So that's a really interesting thing, and you can see just on the picture, it can be somewhere in the jungle. You can have a solar energy uh, module, and then you can independently produce RNA. Yes, and then the pandemic, uh, we know about already uh, that. Um, and again, you can really do, and you can see here depicted the proteins, um, they are really different, and that's the reason why it's so uh, difficult to work with proteins and to make proteins because they are very diff diff uh, different in the, in the size and also um, in the shape. RNA is always the same, as I said, and why not use the body to produce the proteins and not the machine? So let's come to the future, and I think it's a real disruption uh, we, we can see here. Because now we are in a situation that we can talk to the body. We can have a recipe to the body saying to the body, well, you know, um, you might get cancer, so we can have a biopsy of the cancer tissue and can see the, the antigens of the cancer. So antigens meaning uh, what of kind of recognition patterns the cancer cells have to be recognized by the immune system. And then we can really give the information to the immune system, wow, that's a cancer cell, this is how, they looks, how a cancer cell looks like, and you have to be active against these cancer cells. And if the cancer cells, and that uh, makes cancer very, very difficult, it mutates always. So if cancer is mutating, giving new information to the immune system, you can just adapt the vaccine, say, well, cancer is mutating, it's hiding, you, can, you, can, uh, uh, you have to change um, uh, your weapons like this. So, and you can use also other RNA technologies like uh, CRISPR, for example. CRISPR, CRISPR RNA can cut off gene expression. That's also something very interesting. Uh, or CRISPR RNA can, um, can have an enzymatic uh, fac, uh, fac function of RNA. As iRNA can cut uh, gene expression. MicroRNA gives a lot of signals. And you can use the messenger RNA, as I told you. So RNA can do a lot. So, and that's the vision we have, as I told you. So cancer might be a kind of uh, disease you're not, only, you're not anymore dying of because you can always engage the immune system that the cancer cells, they always have to, uh, to, um, to hide themselves or to do something against the immune response. So cancer is growing because cancer has nothing to do. It can just grow. But if you can entertain the cancer cells that they can't grow anymore, that they have to defend themselves all the time, Therefore, you can live with cancers, um, and cancer is not really infecting or in, in implementing uh, the organs, uh, which are uh, like lung, uh, like pancreas, uh, organs which are, which are necessary for your life. It's kind of entertainment. You have to entertain cancer, then it can't grow anymore. The other thing is Alzheimer. We, we don't know exactly what happens in the brain, but uh, the older we get, the more... Uh, 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 the, the, more, the, the more issues we have in our brain. And the thing is also, well, maybe you can also interact with that, with the brain cells uh, to stay healthy. Um, and um, if you see really what makes Alzheimer happening in the brain, you can really defend it also using RNA uh, molecules. And the, the nice thing in the end, and that's a really utopic thing, maybe also aging, because something happens to our body, we age, uh, maybe you can also implement like this, that um, the agent is, is uh, somehow um, slowing down a bit more. 
uh, or wrinkles or things like that. You know, it is cosmetics, but I, I don't know. But maybe something uh, as it's a kind of information to the body and the body needs information. How to prevent aging, for example, what you can do against it. That can also something uh, very interesting happening. Maybe it's, um, I wrote it uh, 10 years back, I wrote uh, 2030, maybe it's 2040, but I think this is a really uh, high chance that it will be like that. You can also implement the aging. Of course, we all die, it's clear, you can't prevent death, but again, maybe you can die in a kind of healthy uh, condition. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's that's uh, that's really um, so. I'm I'm really optimistic that we all see this coming up uh, for us for ourselves, because many many companies are now involving uh, China and all the other countries, and a lot of new technologies will coming up like that, and we have a lot of no more knowledge about receptors, about functions in the body, and that's the easiest way to target those factors is the RNA technology, which is available. So therefore, a very bright futures. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a, one question, to, or maybe two, uh, very quickly, because I remember, uh, I have to ask this because that's, uh, I think, very, uh, I, I believe, very interesting. Uh, you've, you, you showed us uh, the picture with Elon Musk, and that's a situation when, when you have to convince the, someone who is already convin convinced because they know something's going on, that they, they, there is a business, uh, there is an opportunity. But when the, in the start, I remember you told the story that you've been, you, you, try, you presented in front of the renowned uh, 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 scientists, and they told you what? It's nonsense. <laughs> yeah, when I was just a young boy coming from the university, sitting here in a panel uh, talking about uh, the RNA thing, um, people really don't believe me. And there was a Nobel Prize uh, winner uh, sitting in the first row, and he was really standing up uh, in front of me and saying, it's bullshit what you tell here. It's completely bullshit. What do you say against this? You know, it's I get it right in my face. I say, well, <laughs> it's not, I see it. Because I saw it in mice. I injected mice. I saw it in a living, living animal, that it works. And this guy says, indeed, no, it's bullshit. Uh, it's, it's, it's unstable. It can't, uh, because everybody thought RNA is really a molecule uh, which is not usable for any uh, treatment thing. And the thing was really because of the instability they have seen and they have observed, but it really didn't really dig deep enough to see that RNA is the first biomolecule and it's the most stable biomolecule what we have. That, that was very interesting, yeah. And this is a message to young, uh, young uh, scientists to, to be kind of stubborn yes. in, in your in pursuing your, your goals. And second example I, I remember, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this could be the message for startuppers again, because I remember you told uh, later on you've been invited by DARPA in USA to present uh, something about these new discoveries and then happened something interesting. Yeah. So you remember? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course I remember. <laughs> well, DARPA is a military agency of the US. Um, so I, I really didn't know uh, what it was, when, but I, then I, I went to, to Washington to the uh, defense ministry, <laughs> really to the defense ministry. You have to go to a lot of security controls. Uh, it's really amazing. Um, and I was thinking, wow, well, what's, what's going on here? Uh, and then I saw the DARPA officer um, um, in, in um, with our project. Uh, I had a phone call with him, um, but I saw him now in person and he had an uniform. So he had really an uniform. He was a military guy sitting there. And I was sitting here as a, like a on Putin's desk, you know, he was sitting a long time, <laughs> long way <laughs> apart from me. And um, I was telling, you know, how good we are. Because I, I, I knew how I have to pitch on a positive way, uh, how good we are, what, what went well. Uh, and, and there's a, you know, as, as I'm, I'm, I'm separating, you know, we can revolutionize and things like that. And he was really uh, looking very, very angry to me and say, and then he was really putting his hand on the table, throwing the hands on it and saying, stop the bullshitting. Stop the bullshitting. I really want to know what didn't went well, because we at DARPA, we fund only high-risk um, science. We want to really see the risks, and then we can speak about uh, the chances. But I want to see the risk, what, what didn't went well. I want to really tell me the truth here, because also for me, for my knowledge, I want to invest money that you solve the problems. It's a solving problem things here. Um, and I was somehow flipping and say, okay, um, yeah, 
we have we have some production issues purity impurities for example uh, it's it's not easy to control we have to do more controls like that um, anyhow we just have animal models we have to use clinical trials we have to get the right models in clinical trials cancer is really uh, a tough target but vaccines uh, we can't do because vaccines are all available so it's a really issue and say well let's let's talk about it how we can fix this and this was something um, it changed my life somehow really to talk also about uh, the negative things um, and really see how you can solve the negative things, especially uh, to agency like DARPA. I've never seen this before because the German and the EU funding is always, you know, well, yeah, milestone, 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 everything went well, everything is good. Um, and that's a different uh, thing, uh, the flip side thinking. And this I like very much that you really do the high risk things, talk openly uh, to the officer. And if things are not going well, then I have trust and he, he will support me because this is exactly what he wanted. They want to see really the, the edges of the technology. They want to see how far our technology can go because it's very important for the military to know the impact of it. And you can only know the impact if you see failures. So that was very, very interesting. A good teaching to all of you. Um, it's important to cope with failures and to learn from failures and to see the edges, how far we can go with the technology. Okay. Thank you very much, Holger. Um, you will be, you will have a, again chance to, to talk or listen to Holger afternoon in the session of final session. Thank you very much. And we are uh, now starting those uh, separate sessions. That was the message actually, actually for startuppers. Never trust the guys who don't ask for problems.